Welcome back to the Home Inspection Whisper Show. Today, Matt is back. Matt Brading. And uh, he's on our previous podcast. You know, we have some we have some pretty good ones. The one where we were like we started off with like kind of coaching you on through no, actually we never did a coaching one. No. You just well, talked about how you're a single man operator and then uh, you I gave me a, some uh action steps i think that i never did uh on our first one <laughs> you, uh, you kind of did it I mean, I mean i usually did just about everything that you uh said but there was one in particular that might have touched a little bit on coaching yeah anyway and then uh the other ones are actually our, our funny home inspection stories which is actually one of my favorite podcasts didn't we do two of those we did two in yeah the did two day. of those yeah so go back and listen to those if you're trying to figure out who matt is and then he's also going to introduce himself in a little bit so today's podcast, today we're going to, I got another termite complaint, which actually this one is not that bad, but it seemed bad at the time. Uh, but we'll talk about that. I'm going to talk about my Vegas trip just quickly. And then uh, we have several interview questions for you that showed up in the Home Inspection Whisper Facebook group. So yep. we're going to hit all of those and then you hit your Instagram page as well. All right. And then recently you have blown up on... Um, You've blown up on Instagram and you've gotten millions of views and thousands of followers. Yep. And let's just, we're going to talk about what you do. And then do you think it's actually helped your business and stuff? Because there's so many home inspectors out there that just don't believe that social media uh, helps, helps their business, you know? Right. Yeah. So I say we could talk about all of that. So first off, I mean, you're going to like this one. Uh Got a call not too long ago, about three or four days ago, and someone, we did an inspection, I'd say about a month and a half, because that's normally how long it takes for a complaint to come in, because it takes 30 days for them to close, you know, and then they start moving in, they get settled in, and then they find stuff wrong with the home, which is guaranteed. You're always going to find stuff wrong with your home, but it's like the severity of the issue, right? They they thought they had termites uh, because they moved in, you know, those little black roach droppings that are in the garage. Mm -hmm. So they called Orkin the, to come out and look at it. Well, this Orkin guy came out. He's like, oh, that's uh, that's termite frass. Wait, no, that might be rodent. Well, no, it might be roach. <laughs> you know, something along the lines of that. And I'm like, man, if you're a termite guy, you should be able to look at any type of debris and be like, that's what it is. Right. You know, I mean, I can't. Identify. <laughs> Just identify. I mean, immediately, it's very distinctive what things are look like especially from wdi insects once you know what it looks like it's right. it it is what it is so he did that and then he walked outside found um an ant sh shelter tube you know where it's granularly and it's stacked yeah. he's like oh that's termites and so they got scared then he went up in their attic and then he was like oh now you have dry wood termites and so i mean, this is kind of the story's not really told linear guess it kind of is but they called me and i get this complaint phone call I, I don't like to call it complaint they looked they sounded more worried than right. anything and uh, started talking to me about dry wood termites and i started almost started coming up with excuses right away because it's like i don't know natural default just trying to educate them on the termite inspection be like hey dry wood termites are one of the hardest insects yeah, to find you, what made him say they had dry wood termites well oh, i'll get to that in okay. a second yeah so it's I and I and I said, hey, you know, he said that they found stuff on a window seal and he found stuff in the attic. And I started talking to him about dry wood termites. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to come by tomorrow and just take a look at it, because if it's our fault, you know, we take care of it. That's pretty much right. the part of running a company. You know, you're you're human. We all make mistakes and we already had one dry wood termite mistake. So. Why don't add on to it this year? <laughs> so go out there and, you know, I think it's really important about this story is like how I handled the situation. I think I handled it really well and said, cause at first, you know, your natural instinct is like, go in and just start defending yourself. Right. And, and then instead I was like, you know what, Chris, just be quiet, let them talk. And then let's just assess the situation fully before you start arguing with anyone. Right. So but when I showed up, I was thinking about like how I could talk to him and everything I could say. And then I was like, you know what? Just be quiet. And I was like, all right, uh, you want to show me the problem areas? And he's like, yeah. So the very first thing he does is he walks me to the attic. Uh, but before then, I was like, hey, was there anything down here? He's like, no, no. The biggest thing was in the attic. So I walk all the way up to the attic. He comes down. It's a three-story building. And by the way, if you get dry wood termites in those three-story buildings, it's like 
really expensive. Right. Uh, pulls down the attic and uh, I walk up there and he's like, yeah, he said, that's dry wood frass. And I was like, oh, thank God. It's not, you know, because dry wood frass is very specific. It's like two things I'm thinking it might be. Yeah. So you look at it, you know, if you know what dry wood frass looks like, I'll drop in the the Facebook group of the Home Inspection Whisperer to show you what it looks like. But it's very specific. They don't create anything else. They don't even really in, uh, throw out shavings. It's just those pellets from the termites. And it was just wood shavings from like roof. You know, like, yeah, yeah. you know, like cutting a hole cutting through the roof rigid. or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's scattered throughout the attic, like always. But if you're a homeowner and you don't know any better, they're, you're automatically going to like assume it's, it's bad. It, it could be, an, you're like, oh my gosh, it's everywhere. Yeah. Right. And so he scares him of that. Then he takes a picture of damage on a rafter and he says that's dry wood termite damage. Dry wood termite damage very specific too. It it's smooth, you know. It creates like a paper like damage, and this is just where someone sent a bunch of nails into a rafter and it's just tore up. And I was like, so uh, you know, I did my due diligence. I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm not looking at the right thing. And I crawled around through his whole attic. I look everywhere. He was like, Chris, I automatically trust you because this guy didn't even leave the attic ladder you know he just took a picture of that frass and said you have termite dry wood termites and he says it's from the top to bottom and gave him a bill for nine thousand dollars yeah so then we go back downstairs and that where the ant shelter tube was walk downstairs and i'm like all right well where, where's it at he's like well he knocked it down and i was like well termites they Build, rebuild that shelter tube, I mean, like, immediately. Yeah, it'll yeah. happen. I'm on inspection a couple of hours. They will rebuild that tube before I leave. Before you leave, right? So um, I was like, or he's like, yeah, he says, oh, that's termites. Well, I just take my hand and I drag it across the ground and ants just start pouring out. And he was like, well, I was like, man, these are ants. And he was like, well, how, how can I prove that there's no termites here? You know, saying he is. I was like, well, I can tell you one thing. Ants and termites... They don't live next to each other. No. They don't get along. They, they're at war and ants normally win. And he was like, oh, okay. And he almost honestly started crying because it's out like, of relief. yeah, out of relief. And he was just like, he was like, oh my gosh. He's like, we work so hard. And this guy just comes in and takes advantage of them. You know, they don't know what they're looking at. And so I gave him two honest referrals for the ants. And I was like, you can do a preventative termite treatment if you want, but it was just like this, you know, Orkin, there should be like a reputable company, you know, and right. this guy walked in and called a whole bunch of stuff wrong. So here's my opinion. The whole point of the story is this. My inspector actually kind of wants to set him up. And I, what do you think? Would you get involved with that or you just let it go? <laughs> Man, I don't know. Uh, I, I go with I, I wouldn't. Um, it sounds fun. Um, it does sound fun. That sounds, sounds like, like a, a really, really good, good YouTube video. Really good video, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is like some stuff for, made for TV. But yeah, uh, um, but yeah I, my first instinct is that I wouldn't do that, as fun as it sounds. Me too. I was like, man, I could just get up there, throw wood shavings all over the place in my <laughs> yeah. attic. You just saw some wood and be saw like, what some, is this? Yeah, saw some wood. And, you know, I've already treated this house twice because Formosans were down the street. Remember right. that cube uh -huh. that I have? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, serious stuff. So, so I'm not playing around with this place. So uh, what I could do is like, I don't know, let them dig around and find termites, <laughs> you know, uh, and let them give me an eight thousand dollar bill and not even tell them who I am, you know. Man, yeah, yeah. I it's just you know. So the big, the moral of the story is, is like, whenever you get a complaint like that, I think just what you should do is fully assess the situation and make sure that you just take the time to go out there sure. and talk to the client, you know, because I think that's where it really changed is because I could have just argued it on the phone. Right. He probably wouldn't have came at me and he would have paid that guy $8,000. Yeah. I, I think that's actually, or I could have refunded him his money or something like that. Right. But in the end, it, it would never have yeah, worked and out. And then you would have been out your four or $500 or whatever. And he would have been out $9,000 and the problem still, well, the, the problem isn't solved because you've still got this termite guy out there telling people they got termites and they don't. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I feel like I should at least complain to Orkin, you know, <laughs> like, I mean, maybe calling their superior and saying, Hey, you know, just wanted to let you know this. He even spelled termite wrong on his report. Uh, that's a problem. 
that's, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a start. That's a start. Yeah, you don't know what drywood termite frass looks like, and you're a termite guy. How do you spell it? He didn't even quote him to like tint the property. You know, like really? Yeah, to get rid of the drywood termites. He well, just—that's the only way, right? Yeah, for eight thousand dollars, you better be you, tinting yeah, my property. I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm in between working on setting them up or not. I. I'm I'm 50 50 on it, or even call. He wants the guy wants to call the TDA, and uh, you know that's up to him. But I was like, I really feel like that's an easy. That's easy. You could definitely set that guy up. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think it could be done. Yeah. All right. So uh, next part was me talking about Vegas a little bit. Well, I have, oh, yeah. go ahead. If you're gonna set the guy up, maybe you should get his company involved in it. Like the whole. Or, or, oh, call Orkin. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. But this, not- this all of a sudden starts to seem a little bit more ethical. <laughs> like if you say, hey, we're going to do this and, and uh, you know, this particular guy. Yeah, and, but I don't think they want, Orkin wants to be on the YouTube video. Well, yeah, I mean, you had to block out their name or whatever. I was just, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you could block out the name where you block out the name and say termite inspector and just set them up. Be like, hey, this is, you know, this industry regulations. Maybe that could be a good idea. Talk about Vegas. Uh, yeah. Okay. So anyways, uh, you'll like this a little bit, but I went to Vegas and by coinc- complete coincidence, the super conference was going on at the same time. Yeah. My buddy invited me out there to go play poker, went out there. And then uh, my friend, Mar- my Marine Corps friend came over and we just hung out for like the weekend. But, uh, but since the super conference was going on, there were some inspectors in town. I met up with Daryl, one of our home inspection whisper followers and gay. Uh, he, we met up at a brewery and we, which you would like, but have you ever tried kombucha beer? No, no. I've had kombucha, but not yeah. kombucha beer. So like, it's not a beer. It's actually like a fermented tea. Right. It's actually really good. <laughs> I well, I mean, like, kombucha is good, but yeah. I guess they just ferment it to the point where it becomes alcoholic. Yeah. Then it's like 7% or something. It's a, oh. it's a decent one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I had that and I was just wanted to tell you about it. I mean, but it's nice to, and also talk about, it's nice to see the conferences back. I get to see Paula from ACC and stuff like that. The story would be so much better if you had some kombucha right now here yeah. for us to try. Yeah. I couldn't fly back with that, unfortunately. <laughs> But um, anyways, uh, to kind of lead into that part of the story, as Daryl was talking about how he got into the home inspection industry, and I always feel like so many inspectors' stories are, are exactly the same about how they got into it. They bought a home, they saw someone do the inspection, <laughs> yeah. and then they're like, I could do that. I think I could do it better. And yeah. then they start becoming a home inspector. And I was thinking, uh, that's what made me think about this story was I was like, you... That's how you ended up in the home inspection industry, right? No, I can't not remember. Me. No, I mean, I had been through the home buying process a few times, but um, no, my, my uh, sister in law was a realtor. Was like, hey, you know, I think you would like this. Okay, yeah. And so I, I kind of uh, looked into it and went that way. But I've definitely had multiple clients that did that to me. They were like, uh, hey, uh, so how do you get started in this? Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. Lots of them. Yeah, I feel like it's the same thing for like real anything in the real estate. Everyone always thinks that it was like, oh, this is easy. Yeah, and then you make it look so easy. And then you start doing it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is this is pretty intense. <laughs> this, right. is, this isn't just like something you could walk around with just a, a tool bag and, Definitely. and start getting hired. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so mine was, you know, I was just born into it. So I always think it's interesting every time I meet someone, and I, I feel like it's like at least 50% of the time, it's always that story. Like, oh, I, I had an inspection done. The guy was, he missed so much. And then yes. I become a home inspector. A bad experience. Yeah. So then you into- start doing the same thing out right. there. You start missing stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. You yeah. turn into a bad home inspector. You turn into a bad home inspector. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Daryl's bad home no, inspector. No, no, no. no. Daryl's great. <laughs> yeah, Daryl's a good guy. <laughs> um, but uh, you know how it goes out there. There's just so many people that like flood into it. They get into it and they're it's hard and then they quit. Um, so anyways, before we get into the questions, I wanted you to kind of like introduce yourself again. Okay. Yeah. So I'm Matt Brady, um, uh, owner and inspector at Texas Edge Home Inspections in Houston area. Um, I've known Chris for probably, I don't know, what, four years? I think it's four something years. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, 
at one point and even still to a certain degree uh, a, a bit of a mentor um uh was kind of i say we're equals at this point I just mean, two different That's point cool. of views i appreciate that <laughs> yeah. appreciate that uh, one, one thing that you, and we're going to touch on a little bit later, but one thing you really uh, encouraged me to do early was to kind of get uh, uh, on social media uh, and uh, put myself out there that way, which I was terribly uncomfortable with for a long time, but uh, started uh, doing it. And uh, now I do a lot of it. And like I say, we'll touch on that a little bit later. But yeah, I've been uh, running my company, Texas Edge Home Inspection, since 2017. And, uh, um, you know, well over a thousand inspections now at this point of course it was i think we've talked about this before but it's been like uh there was a good three years of that where i was doing it part-time okay. and uh um and then you know so a couple years full-time and i'm yeah and i was the one that was like just quit dude yeah somebody <laughs> somebody asked me recently what was my biggest uh thing i wish i would have known uh or or no uh what was it it was about starting my own business what's what is something you know now that you wish you would have known uh uh, or you wish you would have done when you started your business. And I was like, started sooner. <laughs> yeah. That was it. I wish I would have done it sooner. Uh, anyway, that's um, always like one of my pieces of advice. And I, you know, for me, it's like something easy to take in. Cause whenever I started my business, I didn't have a choice. You know, right. I just got out of the Marine Corps. I was broke and I had no choice for it to work. And so like, whenever someone asked me like, Hey, you know, I want to do home inspections, but I got, you know, benefits and all this other stuff. I was like, if it's what you, you want to do and you're like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, then quit. You yeah. Know, just, so you have no choice. Right. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the way I kind of went about it, I mean, I had a family, I had benefits, I had all these things I had to deal with, you know, and kind of juggle. And, uh, um, and it's what I did is not for everybody. Number one, make getting your own home inspection business is definitely not for everybody. Uh, first and foremost, number two, uh, um, just having all of those things and having to make a living and not having really anything saved up. Like I felt like my only choice was to burn the candle at both ends and work basically almost like two full-time jobs for a while. Yeah. yeah. So that I got to the point where I felt comfortable doing it, yeah. but I do still wish I'd have done it sooner. And I definitely wish I would have found out about and started the process a lot sooner. And that's what I really mean. It's not like I wish I would have quit my old job sooner as much as I wish I would have started this process even years before I actually did. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And the way you did about it is probably the right way. My advice is probably mm -hmm. terrible whenever I'm just like, just quit and do it because like, you know, you have like real responsibilities <laughs> whenever I was, it's funny whenever you have no money, your responsibilities are less, but you still have that, you know, no money aspect. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of depending yeah. factors. There. Right. Your personality is a really big factor too. And, and, uh, um, you're, you're, you're into individual needs, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you did push me to, uh, uh quit and I kept telling you no. And then finally one day I said, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And just do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. right. So, you know, I was interesting on the way here. Um, I, uh, just put on our podcast to listen to them because uh, I wanted to try to not make some of the same mistakes if we made some. I didn't want to talk about the same things. Right. Or if there were like uh, audio issues or things that we rambled on about, which we will inevitably do anyway. Uh, I just thought I would like listen to them and just get refreshed. You're right. So that was nine months ago. That was, uh, Jeez, man, that much time has passed? It was, it was either we were bringing in the new year with a beer. Okay. So it was like either like, right after or right before the turn of the year. Um, That's crazy. And, uh, and the, one of the first things we talked about was that, uh, you know, we've known each other for several years and yet we, uh, never hang out. And that <laughs> yeah. We should do that more. And what's really funny is that this is the, the next time we have seen each other is now. You so are hanging nine out. Nine months later. <laughs> we're doing it again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, there was, uh, um, some things that we talked about on there and one was, well, we talked about our goals, right? Uh, um, and one was it, my goal. We, we wanted to talk about our goals at the beginning of the year and then assess later on, right? Yeah, I think so it's a perfect are, time. Nine months in, like we can kind of see how we're going. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. My my goals were to get ICC certified, to become a certified applicator for termite inspections, okay. and to work on better work life balance. Okay, so ICC certified didn't do it. Yeah, I <laughs> haven't don't... done it. Still want to do it, but. It doesn't look like it's happening this year. Just to touch base on that, I really don't think it's necessary. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I told it. you that yeah, last yeah. time. Okay. But yeah. it's just like a goal. I just want it. Yeah. I okay. Want it. I mean, I, you know, it's funny because like the few times it does get brought up, it's like, yep, yep, I have that. Uh, <laughs> um, it's like every once in a while, somebody requires me to have a million dollars in general liability to inspect a home. Yeah. It's like, well, 
I have it. There's no argument there. I have it. Right. Uh, and I don't know. I just want to check that box. It's one of those things that once you did it, you've done it. And, uh, and so it's still on the list, but it ain't going to make it in right. 2021, I don't think. Uh, the next is a certified applicator. Not happening. Hasn't happened. Probably isn't going to happen. Still Honestly, want to do it. You should definitely do this. It's super easy, especially at the point you're at now. All you have to do is take a class and then a test, and then you got your own business. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, there, there's, there's. <laughs> and you're forking out money like crazy for that too, aren't you? Yeah, it's not so bad, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's a thing. Um, it's know, a thing. I need, to do it. I need to do it. It's on the list. It's on the list. But work life balance. I did work on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when I first started doing this full time, whenever I was first doing, uh, whenever I first you know quit my old job and was doing nothing but home inspections, I would literally take every job I could get. Right. Exactly. And it of didn't course. really matter how far it was. I mean, I mean, to a certain degree, I mean like, you know, but I would take every job I could get cause that was what I had to do to make it happen. Uh, um, and now to be quite honest with you, there are some jobs that I don't, it's not that I don't want them, but I mean like maybe they're too far really for me to feasibly work in like two jobs in a day. And so that is one example of a job where I might turn it down. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, certain times or days, maybe I didn't want to work. I worked a whole lot of weekends, uh, during that first year, just cause I don't know. It was, I thought it would be feast or famine and I was, I mean, uh, it I is the real estate market. It kind of, it, it can be, yeah. it certainly can be for a single man operator. It's not, it's, it, it, you know, that's busy. It, t- we tend to stay. Uh, I mean, I can only do two inspections a day is how many I'll do. So, and so you can be pretty steady. Definitely. Yeah. I can, I can keep that going even during the slow period. So, um, but I decided to work on that a little bit more. I've taken a little bit more time for myself. I have taken most weekends off. Um, really? Def- the whole weekend? I was, almost every week. I don't really work weekends. That's awesome. I, I haven't really done that in about a year. Um, wow, I didn't know that. That's actually really good. I mean, you probably feel really good <laughs> right now. I mean, well, I mean, I, I, that, I'm still doing, you know, usually on average 10 inspections a week. That's you good, know? Yeah. So, I mean, like, it, but I was doing work in the weekends because sometimes it made sense to do that before, like... Uh, um, I would, maybe I wouldn't get enough calls to get 10 inspections in a week. So I, mm-hmm. I, you know, you get the call late in the week, be booked up on Friday, take it on Saturday. But I mean, you know, I want time for me and time for my family and time for other things besides work and home. Inspection. Well, that, that's the purpose. That's the reason why we do what we do. Right. You know, like the purpose of tr- a lot of people forget is like they started this business to make more money, but also to be able to spend it yeah. <laughs> and spend that time with with their family, you know. Yeah, there's other things I want to do. I want to mulch my flower beds. I want to, uh, you know, do do uh, home improvement type stuff. Um, there's all kinds of things that I want to do. So I have been able to work on that a little bit. Now, your goals, do you remember them? Uh, no. Would no. you like me to remind yeah, you? Yeah, let's okay. do them. I, normally, I'm always in a forward movement. <laughs> And I almost forget what I said last next sentence. I so pretty for- much dropped this on you, though. So like you <laughs> yeah. weren't prepared. And I, I heard it today on yeah. the way here, sitting in traffic, driving forever to get here. Uh, God, it's ridiculous how long it took. It turns out there was a van stopped on 610 right in the center lane. So everyone was trying to go around at all the trucks and everything. So anyway, that's what took me so long to get here today. But your two goals, one was to successfully train two people. That was your first one. How are you doing on that one? Good. Actually, uh, we're on our third one now, but we had to let someone go before then, you know, and I think that's actually kind of a good thing to bring up about setting goals, but also don't let those goals affect your, you know, your business model or something. You know, I wanted to hire someone, but just because you hire them doesn't mean you have to keep them if they don't fit, you know, your, your ethics and, you know, how, how the business runs or their work ethic doesn't match yes it doesn't match the goals it's okay just let it go and it did affect our business we actually for four months didn't even match what we did last year but our business really wasn't affected because uh no complaints you know it reduces the right. the complaint volume uh hope that made sense i think you yeah. just wanted to get uh you know you've got a pretty rigorous uh training process right and so you know it takes lengthy too i think uh um yes. and so you wanted to be able to successfully within a year at least train two uh, two people and yes. it sounds like you've you've handled in that. two weeks we'll have our the second one out so well, so the, we're actually third no it'll be the third well, one yeah, yeah that one goes so i don't know how no that no yeah first. so this would have been four so yeah actually the third one it will be the third one out yeah so that's good. Yeah. So I met it. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Yeah. 
Uh, your next one was to get 10,000 YouTube subscribers. And how are you doing there? Are you, I know you're killing it on YouTube, but I don't think you're quite there so, yet. So eight months ago, we probably were at 3,000, if I had to guess. And I'm at 6,300 something. If I, so didn't get to 10,000. Well, but it's not over yet. Yeah, so what, what, we got, what, two months left? <laughs> yeah. That's, I think you can get 4,000. I don't more know. More than man. what you've got. I mean, it's... It, it only takes of. one video, you know, like... One video. Maybe this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably yeah, this one. Because it, this one's going to be super interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Super funny. Yeah. That's the one thing that's hard about the home inspection, uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that. It's just like, I'm just straight to the facts and stuff. And I don't feel like I have that personality where I'm like running around and I don't know, kicking people in the nuts or something <laughs> that, that always gets all the views. It does. Yeah. So I got like one and a half out of the goals. I mean, I think that's pretty good goals. I, I too. think, yeah. Okay. One, one goal you might've undershot a little bit. One of them you might've overshot a little bit. Best to overshot. It's a 10 X, right? Yeah, it's it is. way of thinking. Yeah. Land on the land on the moon or something. Um, but, uh, I mean like that's okay. You know, it does fact of the matter is you set this goal and you worked towards it and, uh, you've made some success. I mean, I'm proud of your YouTube, uh, uh, 6,000 plus subscribers. I mean, YouTube is hard. Yeah, I think it, it, it is very hard to get. I thought it was going to be easy, you know, whenever I started, I thought it was going to be like super easy and it, and it, it, it definitely isn't, you yeah, know, it's not, <laughs> it's, it, it I actually mean, takes like time, you know, a lot of time to, you know, sit down, edit it. And then whenever you're running a home inspection business at the same time, you're like, that's a whole, it's a whole day. Definitely. You know, you know? definitely. So, um, yeah, so that, that's good. Should we make new goals now? I, cause I really didn't brainstorm on that. I'm one. not, I'm not okay. prepared for that at all. all right, well, next, actually two next. of mine, I haven't done. So they're going to remain, so <laughs> I guess technically I already have. All right. Uh, my, my 10,000 one will remain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going to get there. Just there you go. take time. Takes time. All right. So let's move into the questions. And uh, this is actually a pretty common question that we see pretty much all the time in all the Facebook groups. But this was actually asked in our home inspection whisperer Facebook group. And it asked, um, you know, when you first start your business and uh, you and I both have different points of views on this, mainly how I was raised. But do you think it's important to have someone answer your phones right away, like hire someone to answer your phones, you know, such as a family member or, you know, you know, a part time employee or hire a company to answer your phones? You know, what's your opinion on it? And Matt is a single man operator and he does everything himself compared to me where I'm a multi inspector firm where I pretty much sub everything out, right. you know, and uh, they're not real subs or employees. But anyways, what, what's your opinion on that? Well, you know, me and you are going to come from completely different areas on this, uh, two different, completely different ways of thinking. And we started this uh, different and we still do things different. Um, for me, when you start out, I feel like and now some of this may depend on your personality, but I feel like when you start out, uh, it is important to answer your own phones for several reasons. Number one, to get the experience. Would you really have too much of? No, I've like zero. I, I think not? I've still today have probably scheduled twenty inspections. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, I've scheduled every one of mine. Anyway, uh, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> so, uh, I think to get the experience of how, of how uh, you're dealing with these clients and how they're talking to you, and you can really get a better uh, uh, feel for their expectations um, when you're on the phone with them. Uh, I also think that like. Um, now it depends on your personality a little bit because if you're if you're uh, if you're a people person and you like dealing with people, this is going to work really well. Um, I, I will contradict what I'm saying by saying if you're not a people person, if if that is not your gig and, and like that is something that you really don't like doing, it's like customer service and answering the phones, then you probably need to look into having somebody answer your phones. But for me, I like dealing with people and uh, um, and I like you know hearing what they're. Uh, wants, needs, expectations are for me and setting the right expectation. Um, so that if they think I'm going to be doing something, I'm like, whoa, 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 that's not really in my scope. I can just tell them that straight up. Um, I like that. And, uh, um, I, I feel like it establishes a good relationship between me and a trust level between me and the buyer or the client, whoever, whatever it is I'm doing with them. Um, they get to know me a little bit more on a personal level and me them and so and then it also allows me to steer the ship a little bit and this might actually help especially with new guys girls new inspectors um if you you know some people have a different take on this but uh clients buyers being at the inspection the whole time some of them want to be there the whole time most of it's because they don't realize what we do and how 
uh, detailed and intense and how long it actually takes. Um, I don't think that I don't really enjoy people being there the whole time. I don't think it makes me a better inspector. And I think it gives, it, it gives, it distracts me a little bit. I'd rather them come at the end and go over things. But when you're new, I really feel like that's what you need. I feel like if you have somebody hovering over you, it can really, uh, um, uh, hinder the, the report. It can, it can uh, distract you from putting together a good report. Now, when you're on the phone with somebody, you can kind of set that expectation level. Go ahead and put yourself on the hook and say, look, I just want to do a really good job for you. And if I have you there the whole time, uh, um, it may distract me and I may miss something and I want to make sure I get all that. Plus, you know, the home tells a story. So if I get there in the beginning and I find something, it may look like one thing, but at the end of the inspection, be something completely different. So we could be completely worried about something in the beginning of the inspection only to find out it's it nothing. really wasn't that at all. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, give me a chance. To I think that's a really job. good point, actually, what okay. you just said there. I mean, by you setting the expectation on the phone right away, I mean, that, that hits, I mean, that really hits the nail on the head, you know? I mean, it, so now there's companies, I, you have raved about ACC and uh, I actually think that they probably do a really good job um, at uh, handling that, managing clients' expectations, uh, and, and, and telling them about what it is that your company offers. I actually think that, you know, from multiple people, not just yourself, I've heard they do a really good job. Um, but for me, I enjoy it. Um, and so I haven't been able to let that go yet. Plus I feel like I have just a little bit more control. Um, some, <laughs> I mean, well, but, you know, I was telling you about work-life balance. Right. Okay. If I just opened it up Monday through Friday, I wouldn't necessarily have that control. I mean, there is. You can set parameters with them and everything. But, I mean, I got control. Right. So, I mean, like, you know, I I think that that's important uh, to me. But when you're new, yeah, I think there's a, a few reasons why I think you should at the very least get the experience. If it's not your thing or if it starts to become like it's taking up too much of your time, then you got to look into somebody. Some people, if you have a family member or somebody that can do it, that's a possibility. I think we've also discussed how that may not be a great move either. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so uh, I, I think uh, also it depends on what you know, your business model you want to set up too sure. as well. So like there's some people that want to get in this and create a, a business, a bigger business. Like you know? multiple inspectors? Yeah, multiple yeah. inspectors. If I had and, multiple inspectors, I would definitely have to yeah. change my game. Right. But, you know, as a single man operator, you want to keep your cost lower and then you, you can manage the phone at the same time you're doing home inspections. I'd say, you know, go for it that way. So you really want, as you're getting into this, you want to have a concept of you want to have an end goal, you know, like, Hey, I just want to be a single man operator. I want to invest my money. I want to save. And that's all I want. Yeah. Answer your own phone. Fine. But you know, if you want to create a business and the first step I would say is you have to drop your phone because it eats up a lot of time and time is even more valuable than the actual money you're making whenever you're running a business. You need that time to be able to make the right decisions and the right business moves. Because if you're always on the phone and you're always scheduling things, looking at your calendar, answering people, you it you would be surprised how fast that adds up and how much time it adds up. Now, there are some things about answering your own phone that like, okay, so there, you know, some of your uh, agents and stuff that call you, they get like a direct line to you. There's a little bit more of a personal relationship with them. Uh, and they like that. They may like that you answer your own phone. So that's the reason why they like dealing with you. Oh, they do. That yeah. also though will be counteracted probably if somebody like ACC or uh, someone takes over your phones, they will, they know how to close deals. So they'll book you jobs that will probably counteract itself. Mm -hmm. You might, <laughs> that agent may not use you because they want you to answer the phone, but somebody else will because they're not, they don't, they're not wired that way. No, um, well, the, a lot of the older agents are want to speak to the inspector and schedule it. And, you know, the newer agents, not so much. They understand it, it's a business, but no, there's been several times where I've had an older agent or, or, or someone that's been in the business a long time. They're like, Hey, what, what's your phone number? I'm like, Hey, this is my phone number. If you have any home inspection questions, call and ask me. But if you want to schedule, you call this number like, well, I want to call you to schedule. It's like, I don't even know how to book an inspection. <laughs> I actually just straight up tell I was like, I was like, I, I have so much going on in my calendar. You, it would be a mess for me to schedule the inspection. So if you call the office and let them schedule the inspection and I can handle any problems you have or any yeah. questions. And then, then they're just like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to call Matt. <laughs> you know, yeah. like okay that's fine you know you're not gonna win all the business you know it just then they call me and I, I can't get to you call chris <laughs> yeah that's that's probably what actually happens <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so I think we hit that one pretty good. Yeah, sure. You know, so just it really, I know it's kind of a, a vague answer, but the the answer is is just you really got to figure out how you want your business to run. I More times say. than not, I'm going to say take the experience and at least answer your phones for a little while and get the feel of it. Yeah, and then if you do want to grow outside, you know, and start hiring people before you can even hire someone, you need to drop that phone. That's also going to manage your expectation level of a call center. Yeah, if you answer your own phones. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, see what you want them to do and how how to answer it. Definitely. All right. So this one is kind of a, a side turn, but we get this question literally all the time. If uh, what infrared uh, camera would you recommend? You know, I think this is a pretty good question. Yeah, you want me to take it? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, um, you go so first, yeah. uh, FLIR all the way. Um, and uh, there are three models that I think are uh, good if you... Um, now, I tell people this quite often. Get infrared technology, get the best you can afford, uh, but anything is better than nothing. I would not necessarily recommend the one that clips your phone, that, that adapts to your phone. That's the only one I say don't um, get. But yeah. uh, the C5, um, uh, I... I actually personally haven't used the C5, but I know your level of uh, inspecting and, and how you, uh, you know, what your expectation level is out of a tool. And you s- seem to think that it's a pretty decent camera for the money. Uh, and we, st- we stopped using it, but yeah, I understand. Well, yeah, yeah go because ahead. you have other, but I mean, like, yeah. but if someone was on a budget, would you recommend that to them? Absolutely. And, and you're not the only one. I've talked to other folks that said the same thing, and I've actually seen your demo of the C5. And, and so on a budget, and maybe if I realized the importance of this technology whenever I first started and I had, and I was on a smaller budget, I may have that bought that one, but I didn't, I waited to include uh, thermal imaging until I could afford the E4, which is what, $1,200, $1,500? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. The, um, uh, the, the E4 is a thousand. Exactly. Okay. So it's gone down then. Mm-hmm. Um, Whenever I bought it, I feel like it, I know it was over a thousand, maybe twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, some somewhere in that range. Um, there's nothing wrong with the E4, and if I had to recommend one camera, I would do that one. I have and use the E8, especially for what we do. Yeah, for yeah, specifically for this, yeah. um, I have and use the E8. Um, the E8 is about three thousand dollars. I do not think personally, I I love it, but I do not think the value comes at that. $1,500 or almost $2,000 difference. Uh, you're getting a little bit better picture quality. And I think the temperature range is a little bit uh, wider, In but further distance uh, or something. But yeah. I mean, like, I don't think for what we do, it's worth it to go E8, um, but it is a good camera. It's a better camera. Um, and so, you know, I have one, um, but I, nothing wrong with the E4. And from what I understand, the C5 is, is a solid camera. If you are on a budget, that's about as low as I think I would go. You know, it's funny. I literally almost wrote down the exact same thing. <laughs> you know, well, so there you go. Yeah. So you know, you first get into the industry, I would say buy the C5 immediately. You know, it's like 500 bucks, one inspection, you know, and get out. I guess it's actually two inspections because you're doing profit margins mm-hmm. or whatever. Forever. But uh, you, I mean, like it's it's instant, right? After you get enough money, then you go the E5, E model and up. That's what you, that's what you should move to. Definitely. This one was asked by David in the home inspection um, whisper page. We, yeah, and you said that this is kind of a poke at you, but I think it might be. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, what's your thoughts on uh, new inspector ride-alongs? You know, and uh, yeah. So, what's your thoughts? It's on my it? my thoughts on it. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, your thoughts my, on my these... thoughts on it are. Um, it, I mean, I think it's really great. I think uh, if you're looking to get a home inspection, you should totally do it. The problem is finding somebody that can actually do it. Um, I mean. The thing with me is I am, again, you know, it's, it's like a client being there the whole time, a buyer being there the whole time. I am a talker, okay? It's not the me. It's not the, the person being there that's the problem. It's me. Right. And so if you can imagine if, if, a, if, a, if a buyer or a client's walking through the house with me and I'm go, talking to them, I, man, I might be distracted enough to just ask them about their day, what they do for a living, and then we go off on a completely different thing, right? That's going to take more time ultimately. Um, and then we can talk about, you know, whatever problems I'm finding, that's going to take more time. Um, well, if you take that and, and look at it like a, a, another inspector riding, uh, riding along, they're trying to learn. Well, I love teaching, uh, that actually I want to, I want to go on, off on that in a minute, but I love being able to teach people things. 
And so I'm going to go at it. I'm just going to yeah fill really, their head with as yeah, much knowledge as possible. Way too much, honestly. Right. But what the, what is that going to do? I'm going to tell them it's like, oh well, yeah, this kind of water here. You got to watch out for this. But if it's not this one, it's this kind. And if it's this year, and if they have this type of fitting, and all of a sudden they're not going to learn anything from it. I think <laughs> I think they will. They will. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like I'm going to give them all this information. It's going to take a ton of time. The thing is, most of my inspections take four hours. Right. Okay. And I'm trying to do two a day. Uh, I am leaving my house and trying to get, you know, early to every inspection. I'm doing one at nine and doing one at two o'clock. Uh, most of the time in between these, I'm just like eating some cold lunch in my truck on the way to my next and job. You're, and you're I, answering your phone. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the time really uh, most of the time to have somebody ride along, although I wish I did. Um, I hope to try to figure out a way to make that happen one of these days. Maybe maybe that's a good goal. There's definitely several uh, folks out there that have asked me and that want to do it. And I like people and I like teaching. And so maybe I should try to figure out a way uh, to incorporate like a day a week that we could actually do something. Probably like a day that. a month, honestly. A day a month, yeah, yeah, a day a month, probably even better. Um, so yeah, maybe it's something I should think about as a goal for next year. You know, what I was going to tell you about teaching, what I want to expand upon is I have always believed that there's no real better way to learn than to teach. Mm -hmm. Every time I try to teach somebody something, all of a sudden I learn something. It may be something I already know, but it just didn't click. Yeah, it re reinforces it. Yeah, all yeah. of a sudden it's like, ah, that's, you know, I, I knew it, I say it, I do it. But all of a sudden it like makes sense, like hands-on learning or whatever it does. Uh, uh, it kind of opens your eyes to things. And so... I really like being able to, uh, you know, teach people, answer people's questions, uh, um, because I end up learning from it a lot. Yeah, definitely. So I think you kind of, you know, really, you hit that ride along thing. I do, we do get asked questions a lot about ride alongs and the, the biggest problem is, is it comes down to time. You know, it's, there's a lot of moving parts whenever it comes to doing an inspection and scheduling inspection, writing the report. And I understand that y'all are trying to get into the business, but one thing you have to remember is that we're running a business and there's a lot of things happening and we only have eight hours in that day. So, you know, the only thing that I can really truly see as fair is maybe compensation, you know, you know, so like if you're being compensated for the day, I, I think that's 100% fair, you know, reach out and offer to pay for the ride alongs. I think that's good, but it's also good to, like you said, to want to give back because the industry treats you so well and, you know, do that. But if you really want in and you need a, this experience, you, you just, just heard Matt talk about the amount of time it takes, you know, remember you got to respect his time and that, that no way, other way to do that than money. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's true. And that's, Although I think that that would probably help and, and definitely help me try to make some time for it. I do think that it's less of an issue for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's not money, but like being compensated for it is less of an issue for me than scheduling is a big problem. The one thing that we haven't really talked about is I think, in my opinion, if you're going to have somebody come and do a ride along with you, you need to get them on the right job. Right. Yeah. And it needs to be on the right day. So like most of the time I do two, two inspections a day. Well, if I'm doing two, 3,000 square foot house was built in 1972. Day. Like there's no way I can fit all that in. But, it, but if I'm doing a 1500 square foot house that is and see new construction, isn't always where it's at. I mean, I'd like to take them. I do a lot of new construction. I'd love to take uh, do a ride along on new construction, but you does not get the you're full not gonna, value. Yeah, you're not going to get a, a great deal of benefit as you would from an older home. That has so. a lot to say too. I mean, it has. I mean, like, yeah, you can schedule it, but what the way the real estate market's so funny all the time. I don't even know if there's going to be a good enough job for you to be on. It has to be vacant. You know, the client vacant. The, yeah, is client thing. really not going to be there. Right. You know, so it's very circumstantial. So yeah, I understand y'all want to do the ride alongs, but at the same time, you have to understand it from our point of view that it, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get it in that right time. But, you know, if, honestly, just keep asking. And one day it actually just might work out. I and did it, one. And I it, did have somebody come on one. And it will be literally that day. They'll be like, Hey, are you doing a ride along? And exactly you'll look at your phone and it'll be like, yeah, today works. You want to come? And that's how it happens. Like right. we really don't know what we're doing literally till the next day sometimes. Right. So that's how it works. We can't like plan this out like a week and a half later. It has to be like that literally hours. Precisely. Sometimes. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that actually adds into the next one. Cause you brought this up for a second as someone asked, um, 
Brad actually asked, uh, what's the best way of marketing new construction inspections? And I think this is actually a pretty good one. I'm, I'll take lead on it. Go first. Ahead. Yeah. So, right. you know, whenever you're marketing in the home inspection industry, you don't actually just ever target one thing. You know, this is well, I've talked about this several episodes back. I mean, way back in the episodes. But when you're marketing home inspections, you're marketing everything. You know, so if you want to get into new construction inspections, just Throw it in your toolbox, throw it in your website, throw it on your business cards, talk to the real estate agents about it, how, how it's important. But it's not like you're just going to be a new construction inspector. You're going to be a phase inspector, a foundation inspector. You're going to be the, an old house inspector, a pier and beam inspector. So it's, it's not just new constructions. You're not going to be able to just get into that and build a whole business model off of it. And if you are awesome, but it's going to be rare, you know, it just... You know, or it's going to be very slow going, let's right. say that much, very slow going. So I definitely um, would say you can throw it into your toolbox of becoming a home inspector or, you know, wanting to get in that market space, but don't just think that's what you're going to be doing all the time. Well, also, I think like um, you see what happens to uh, a home when you see it after it's been up for a while. So when you're doing new construction, you know, we're not code inspectors. Right. We're performance inspectors. Well, when a home's new, um, if you haven't seen uh, older homes and seen how things are affected by over time and, and how they're performing, that's a solid point. You're not yeah. really bringing a whole lot to the table on a new construction. Inspection. Exactly. Yeah. You're. You know. You have to think about how water's flowing. You know how this roof line ends at this point. You know, and you've seen the damage that it's caused, or you know, missing kickout flashing, or how the valley works. You know, it's it's perfect. Or even some of this decorative trim that they're sticking in stucco is kind of crazy, yeah. you know, but <laughs> that, that's a whole different topic. Well, let's, let's hold on. Cause the question was, how do you market it to, right. to get it? Okay. So, I mean, let's answer the question. Cause I mean, like we're saying, Hey, that's going to be a tough to, to, to get. Maybe that's not the, maybe the question is just like, how do I get more of them? How do I market to try to get more of them? I'm going to assume that's what you mean. And I'm going to say the best way I think you can market to get uh, new construction inspections is to make videos and post them of your inspections yeah that's i mean that's perfect (laughs) you're you're putting them out there on social media who's on social media the public home buyers home buyers see this and they're and the second they see somebody that knows somebody buying a home sees a video and they share it with somebody else and they're like hey check this guy out i mean i get a lot of business off social media Uh, i mean so i mean i think that's you know these that's your your crew also uh google Oh yeah, definitely. Um, people that are buying new homes don't always have realtors. Realtors oftentimes will refer them to a home inspector. But oftentimes, people that are buying new houses, I think they should have a realtor. But if they don't, they will still. Um, you know, the the society tells most people that they've learned that they probably should get a home inspection, so they resort to Google to find somebody. So they go and they look and they find somebody usually in their area. This is what's awesome about new construction. I get a lot of new construction in my area. Because people find me on Google and I have good Google reviews. Yeah, so that's actually perfect, you know. And I think the video thing is the best way to get new construction inspections easy. Yeah. I mean, that's because most of the time people don't know where to go. And through social media and sharing, even your video might even be the reason why they get it. So right. I think that's perfect. All right, we hit that one. Um, getting close on time, I think. So what we need to do is cruise through these questions. And I, this is actually one of my favorite questions. And it says, any tips for a 41 year old man studying to become a home inspector? You know, and I thought that was a really good question. I think this came through your Instagram page and I'll let, I'll let you hit it. Cause I think you're going to hit it better than me. Is it cause I'm you know? 42? Well, maybe, or okay. you got into it. You know, uh, I got into this, you know, when I was like 20 something, Yeah, you know, I was 37. And, yeah. Um, tips. Uh, okay. So I think the one thing that you should probably know, and I'm assuming you're probably coming from another industry. The one thing you should probably know is that at least the way I do this job, it is pretty physically demanding. Um, and so, I mean, like I'm in the elements, I'm in the heat, I'm in the attic, I'm on the roof. Um, and so be, be prepared for that. Um, um, I think, you know, God, tips for 41. Um, so I, you know, I actually thought this kind of hit me a little bit. And that? I think, you know, whenever someone's like, I'm 41, can I really, do I have the time to start, you know, a new business? That's oh, yeah. how I read this question. And right. I'm always like, you can always reinvent yourself. You yeah. Know? You know, how long did it actually take you to become busy? Two years? Yeah, about a yeah. couple of years. Yeah. yeah so like, what, what will you be like, 43? You know what I mean? Like, so just start it. 
keep grinding at it and you'd be surprised how fast it actually takes off if you really take the time and invest into your business. Yeah, I mean, not that like 41 is, is old. I, You're not I very said that about physically demanding. It's just mm-hmm. like, you know, make sure that you know that because, you know, I am 42 and I mean, I do have like, you know, things that hurt that didn't hurt before. <laughs> um, and so just yeah. be prepared for that kind yeah. of stuff, you know, and also be really careful and cautious because obviously the older you get, maybe you have a family, you know, um, falling off, ladders, th- falling off ladders and yeah. things are, are these are, these are all are big things when you're young and, and um, you know, in your twenties or even thirties, that seems like less of a problem than it does whenever you're a bit older. But the truth is you can do this for many years. Yeah. I mean, the, one of my inspectors is in his late sixties. Yeah. I mean, you, know, so. yeah, you can, you can do this for many years. Uh, um, as long as you stay, you know, uh, relatively, I think, I think, the older you get, uh, healthy. uh staying relatively healthy and yeah. fit is going to be play a big factor. Fit um, is a huge factor because you know, most of the things that you find are places where people can't get very to, tight, yeah. you know, so they, they, you got to think like the common person is going to see things anyways, you have to be and fit enough to be able to go around the corner in that attic or walk on the roof and look down in the valley uh, around the corner, you know, you have to be able to get to those places. And I think that's a, a solid point too, as well. But 41 is not old. Not at all. No, <laughs> you know? just, just mash the gas, man. Do you're, it. You're not even halfway there yet. You know, yeah. <laughs> in today's medical, you're, you're good, you know? So, um, I don't know. You think we hit that one pretty good? Just, I think so. I mean, you know, I, I have it in my, uh, Instagram. So if I, uh, um, dwell on that question a little bit, I might uh, come back to it and answer it a little bit later. Okay. Um, so this is going to be one of the last questions and I really want you to hit to the social media before it gets too late. Um, let's go, let's go with this. Um, I think this is a really important question and I think this happens. This is brought up all the time, you know, how many times uh, do your findings kill deals or the relationships with realtors from your findings? And he says, I feel like I'm killing too many. And by killing the deals or killing the relationships, do you even care? And so I, man, there's so many parts to this question. It's, and yeah. honestly, this could be like a whole another podcast. So keep it short. <laughs> you know, Should we just do another podcast? Yeah, we can do another, we can do another podcast on like, you know, we'll, we'll give a brief answer. Just, you would do it. Definitely should hit this question a little bit easy. Yeah. Okay. You want me to hit it? Yeah, go first. Uh, okay. So I used to worry a lot more about, uh, whether or not my inspection was killing deals. I care a lot less about that now. I think whenever I did, uh, mostly it was because I was new and I was not confident in myself and my findings. Not, Oh, I'm sorry not as confident in myself and my findings uh, because you certainly don't want to kill a deal on something that like you're wrong about. Um, Most of that was just my own problem. Like uh, um, I was usually uh, right. I just wasn't confident. Um, But I do care less uh, about uh, whether or not I kill a deal. But the thing is, I think it's all about the delivery. Um, Look, there's always homes are always going to have problems. People need to know that. And uh, especially somebody, we're mostly talking about people that are buying older homes. Yeah. Uh, and it's like understanding the climate of the, the person buying the house. Like, where are they at? Are they looking for a fixer upper? Do they know, you know, okay, this house was built in the, in the fifties. Like, uh, you know, the chances of it having cast iron pipes is definitely there. I'm, you know, before I even walk in the house, I'm probably going to tell you, you might need a hydrostatic test. You know, the chances of galvanized plumbing are great. Um, you know, do you know the risk of galvanized plumbing managing some of these things, uh, um, up front. And, and I think also, um, the realtor plays a big factor in this. I feel like, I mean, I'm not here to train realtors on how to do their job, but when we are all on the same page here, I mean, if they're taking them, these first time home buyers to a house that was built in 1952, um, look, I'm not necessarily sure that's the house for a first time home buyer, you know, uh, unless it's really fixed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Oh God, who knows about that? Yeah. Going on about my shirt here. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I think, uh, um, I, I don't care as much about it, whether or not, but I also want to make sure that um, I'm truthful and honest and that my uh, you know opinions come across like if something isn't a huge deal, that doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't go in the report. Okay, an inspection report on a really old home is going to be long. It's going to have a lot of things. Um, there's going to be a discussion involved and we just need to determine like what is, you know, something that needs to be fixed right away that causes a safety hazard versus, you know, you always have to think like people are probably living in the house right now and, you know, and they're living, there. they're living there just fine, uh, completely oblivious to this. I feel like that plays a factor. 
Okay. Right. So we just need to like identify all the facts. Why do you want this house? What are the things that bother you? What are the things that you're prepared to, to take care of? Um, and I think you can identify that without steering them one direction or the other. Uh, but I'm not here to talk anybody off of a ledge. Right. So I think you hit that pretty good. And I, you said there was a lot of really key points in there. And one of the things that kind of spoke out to me was like, I'm, I feel like I'm killing a lot of deals. Well, the biggest thing is, is, you know, I do hundreds of home inspections and I don't think there's very rare occasion where the deal is actually ever killed. So whenever you're doing this delivery, you really need to think about what you are describing as important and what's not important. And there was another topic that you kind of brought up in there. And you even mentioned this previously in this inspection process. It was about like getting getting to know your client because I think that's a very big deal. You know, whenever I first meet the client, I talk to them and part of our very beginning speech is, you know, um, what are you worried about? You know, what's your expectations of this inspection? So you set the tone of the inspection. You figure out what they're worried about. You'd be surprised how many people just don't care about most things. I only want to know this, you know, and that's it. They only care about the HVAC system. But so then you're going to stress about the HVAC system, but you're not going to stop you from telling the whole story. But really, you need to figure out what worries your client the most and let them determine that, not you. Right. Like, because you, me, I'm not buying a home with galvanized water lines. I'm just not doing it. I don't want to mess with it, especially, well, I guess it depends. But for the right price. Oh, you're right. Right this price. This is negotiations coming <laughs> yeah, in. You're right. Yeah, the right price, but also the layout, you know, it right. depends on the layout. Like, if the bathroom's on the front right corner and the plumbing starts on the, the yeah. back or the front right, you know, wherever, yeah. I'm not going to do Easy it. Easy access. Yeah, yeah or, but or, or. anyways, yeah, it's situational, but you need to figure out what, you got to figure out your client's tolerances yeah. and that's a, a very big thing. And I say this all the time and then always pick a list of three things out of your inspection, give them the three most expensive things, try to ward them away from the cracks and the paint and what, you know, scuffs in the floors and focus on those three major things and then let them decide, you know, you don't decide their opinion because one of the things my father always said, and I bring this up several times in the podcast is like, you need let you don't know where these people came from, you know, like, so you don't know if they came from a box underneath the bridge and this is a mansion to them, or they're moving from a mansion into a, you know, a shack. So like you need to figure out what their expectations are before you start pushing your opinion around. I think that's, yeah. don't scare them, but, but report honestly. And on, if the deal dies, uh, maybe it just wasn't the house for them. Right. And it wasn't because of the facts you delivered, but there are inspectors that are out there are deal killers, but it's just like, I don't like the idea of a deal killer, you know, just, mm -hmm. just present just, facts, just do it, just yeah, do the job, just present facts and then let them decide. Don't, don't push them, let them know how much it costs. And you go from there. So we are getting really short on time. So, Recently, you have blown up on okay. Instagram. Like you've gotten millions of views, you know, thousands of subscribers, you know, and the biggest thing is, is you know, what I want to know is, or, you know, people want to know is what is your strategy and why do you think your Instagram is doing better than everyone else's in the home inspection industry that sure. is, you know, that because it's very niche. Well, I think uh, um, is a combination of a lot of things. One, uh, and the most important is persistence. Okay, so um, we, we've been doing stuff on social media for years now. And, uh, and it got to a point where I was persistent and consistent. Um, I was putting things out all the time. And it's not just, I'm not just doing a picture. I'm not just doing uh, uh, an IGTV video. I'm not just doing a regular post video. I'm not just doing reels. I'm doing all of it. And I'm doing it all the time. Um, and I think, you know, there's a little bit of luck involved in the right place, right time. I was doing the same thing that I normally did, but uh, um, there was some shifts in the algorithms and, and all of a sudden uh, my uh, information, my, the stuff that I was putting out there was presented to uh, more people than normal at this, at, at one point. And then it became, uh, all of a sudden, a lot of followers started to flood in. Now, I like to think that 
the reason why they're following me and still following me is because they're entertained. Right. So, I mean, the energy, it's kind of like, you know, um, people talk about marketing and it's like, well, if you don't have a good inspection report, what's there to market? You know, like <laughs> yeah. if you don't have good material out there, what's the use of having 17,000 followers, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, it blew up on me. And, uh, the thing was, was, it was at the, it was, I was at the right place at the right time. And I knew we'd been doing this so long. I, you know, I had been, putting out content and I knew how to do it. And so whenever, uh, all of a sudden followers started to roll in, I, uh, it just kept going my foot on the gas and I just even I, hit I it harder. It. Oh yeah. I knew ex- I, I put, uh, several things in place that I felt like were strategic, uh, to try to help, uh, uh, you know, feed the monster. And, uh, and it, I mean, it's, it seems to be working. It, it's, uh, you know, 17 and a half thousand right now and, uh, and still growing. Um, yep. So if you had to give like one piece of advice before we end the podcast about, you know, doing Instagram, and I feel like we really got to hit, do another podcast on this one too. Okay. Yeah. We, so we are, we have two pieces of content to hit the next time, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, about how to talk about your inspection reports. And then also this, I really wanted to talk about this more, but we really are running out of time. So, you know, if you had to give a piece of advice you know, what, what would it be if like an inspector is just getting into the Instagram game? You know, what, what would you say that they need to do? Just do it. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And mm-hmm. so do it, uh, and do it as much as possible. Put, put, make a video of yourself doing something. that's probably gonna be terrible in the beginning. Yep. Um, but do it and put it out there. Don't be so self-conscious. Remember at the beginning, there's probably gonna be 12 views. <laughs> so like, don't worry about that. And you one know. will be your mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so don't worry about that as much. Um, just put it out there and get it done. And every, with every video and every post you make, you will get better. You will learn, oh, I need to talk this way, hold the camera this way. Uh, don't say, um, so many times or whatever right. it is, but also I think this post two it things. still anyways. Yeah. Post it for sure. But be yourself too. You got to show some personality. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to look good or, or, or people aren't going to be attracted to it. If there's not some personal factor, you got to have some personality. In it. Yeah. And I, and I, I, what I recommend doing is like you're on the YouTube channel right now or in the podcast, go to my YouTube channel, go to videos and go to my very first video. I purposely did not delete it. Yeah. I was just messing around. Mine I'm like, out there too, terrible. Yeah, I was just like, just, or you can go to Matt's very first video, you know, yeah, don't you'd, do that. you'd be surprised. Like, <laughs> you're like, Oh wow. Okay. It started here and now it's yeah, here. Right. You know? So like you kind of figure it out and you get more of a personality on camera and kind of go from there. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up there. Yeah. Hey, can I give a shout out real quick? Yeah. Uh, sh- uh, hey, shoot. Yeah. I don't know if you saw my shirt. Uh, flippers keeping home inspectors busy since HGTV. <laughs> uh, that was a, a quote that I came up with and it's uh, uh, Kenya inspector underscore apparel on Instagram. Uh, okay. She makes these shirts for inspectors. She makes uh, other types of uh, clothing as well. She does custom orders. Uh, and anyway, she's also a home inspector and so small business, uh, but uh, you know, also uh, a home inspector as well. So she makes those shirts. She makes these shirts okay. and uh, she makes all kinds of uh, home inspection shirts. But uh, this is, this is my, quote here uh i think she sells them for like 18 bucks and like i say you're supporting a small business and supporting a home inspector inspector underscore apparel uh she's working on a website um but uh look up uh instagram at inspector underscore nice. apparel we'll put that link you know we'll put that link right below all right so that's good i'm finally glad matt's back after nine months you know <laughs> it's just a little bit of time <laughs> we're supposed to be hanging out more you know <laughs> and then uh um, Yeah, that's it. So we're going to end that podcast there and uh, catch us on the next one. See you guys. Bye.